Welcome to the lesson number 7 of my PowerShell lecture series. In our last two tutorials, we covered variables and today we will go over arrays and array list. Unlike a variable which contain one element or object, an array contain a collection of objects. When the return from a command is assigned to a variable, an array will be the result if the command contains more than one object. Because PowerShell has many built-in commands or commandlets with many objects, arrays are an important part of PowerShell 7. For example, if we create a variable, so let's call it com uh, processes, and if I equate that to get dash processes, which is a commandlet that is built into PowerShell, this will result in creating an array. The reason for that is the get processes commandlet contains multiple objects within it. So let's call in this um, variable that we created. And if I run this, it will result in displaying bunch of items, basically all the processes currently running on your terminal. So right here. So how do we know this is an array, not simply a variable with assigned some value? One way we know this is because of the way that it is displayed on the terminal, we know it is more than one object or item which make this a an array instead of a variable. But also, if I clear the screen here, which CLS, if I put dot get type function, recall from our previous tutorial, the get type function, we can check what type of item that we have creating up here. So if we run this part of the code right now, it'll return the item as an array. So in other words, if you assign multiple object to a variable, that would create an array because PowerShell 7 contain many commandlets with many objects contained within them. You can easily use this method to create arrays for different scripts that you will be writing. So we know this is an array, the get process assigned to this variable is an array because we, when we use the get type function, it also return an array as well. Now, if I clear the screen here, the recommended method of creating an array in PowerShell is using a specific notation that is re recommended by Microsoft. That would be you start with a dollar sign, just like uh, a variable. So I'm gonna call this array my array. And with an equal sign, which is our operator for all PowerShell uh, scripting, we will put an at symbol and we will gonna open a bracket and close a bracket or parentheses. So this will result in creating an array with no objects contained within them. And how do we know this is an array? Again, we can use the same get type uh, function. So if I put the dollar sign and I call in that uh, array and I put dot get type, and if I run these two pieces of line, and that will return the get type as a array. So this is the recommended method of creating an array using Microsoft PowerShell 7. If you are just starting out in PowerShell, this is the rec this is the way that I would rec also recommend that you create arrays because that way you are sticking to a one method of creating an array and it is easy to uh, for you to follow through. However, 
We can also create an array using the same scripting notation we use for creating variables. You may have already noticed that in here, we start all our arrays, including the array that specifically explicitly define an array right here with a dollar sign. Dollar sign is also associated with variables. In fact, this is a variable until the get processes start adding its uh, objects into this variable. So once this get processes uh, attach the um, objects to com processes, uh, you know, variable that we created here, it is basically a like a variable. So in other words, a variable containing multiple objects, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, would create an array. So if we add multiple objects to a variable, so for example, uh, let's create a, a variable called uh, my array. So this is basically a variable. So let's call it my array uh, two this time. So I created a variable called my array two, and there's nothing assigned to it. If I equate this with the equation operator, and if we add only one object, let's say uh, Sanuja, and if I run uh, this with uh, the my array two dot get type again the same uh, you know function. If I run these two pieces of command, uh, I will clear the screen here. It will return this as a variable. So let's do that. Run, and it is basically returning as a a, base, a variable. It's a string variable. It's a, it's an object, and it, it's not an array and it is basically right now sitting as an variable, pretty much. But if we add more items here, for example, I'm gonna put manager, so it's another string. I'm gonna add, let's say another something, so let's say net it geeks. So you can have spaces uh, contained within a string. You can add to an array or even a variable. Now this item, going to change from a, like a system object like this, like a string into an array. So if I run uh, these two pieces of command again, it's returned back as an array. So notice when we first ran this part of the command, uh, you know, it's the script with only one object, which is Sanuja assigned to my array two, it returned system object, which is basically a variable at this point. But when we have multiple items in here, so we have one, two, three strings here, or even two strings if we have, and when you run this uh, part of the uh, script again, it returns as an array. In other words, you can add multiple items or objects or elements simply to a uh, an element, uh, sorry, a, a variable, and that will result in pretty much creating an array. And this is true for uh, you know, even uh, other types of um, objects or values. For example, if I type my, uh, uh, let's say my array three, and I'm gonna just gonna put a bunch of numbers, 10, 15, 11, it's it just random numbers, uh, 21, sure, why not, uh, 12, seven. This is also an array, um, it just contain numbers instead of, um, you know, uh, variables. So for example, uh, so instead of strings uh, shown up here. For example, if I change this to uh, the uh, array three, so if I just run these two parts of the command, and if I run that, uh, it should return, oh, uh, just there's a M instead of a comma, that's an error. So let's clear the screen. And if I just run just this two part, it'll return as an array. So previously I had a, a mistake here because I just had M here. So that would return uh, an error. So make sure you, you don't have any typos and that would also result in an array. So this is an array containing bunch of numbers. This is an array containing bunch of strings, but these are both arrays because it contains more than one object.
if you just have one sorry uh, if you just have just one object for example it will just be a, a variable so yes this notation with starting out with the dollar sign character associated with variables but when the variable contains more than one element it become an array so that's what i just want you to like remember or drill into your head so that you are aware of that you know this is what it what is it it boil, boil down to uh, in terms of writing scripts in powershell 7. we can also uh, create an array with multiple elements using the same type of uh, recommended uh, method which is this method so which is very simple uh, which is the same thing as what we did here with the variables con converting into arrays right here uh, in uh, in here we can add items in uh, into it and which hence creating a array instead of an empty array we're going to have an array with multiple uh, objects contained within them for example if i create my uh, array and this time we can have to go number four because it's a new array and i'm going to go to equal and add symbol and now i have created an array using the first method and i'm going to put some country names so i'm going to say japan or oh, just bunch of strings doesn't need to be country names it could be anything so i'm just putting bunch of names canada france italy Again, we can have multiple, uh, you know, uh, terms here as well. So, for example, Sri Lanka has a space in the middle, Sri Lanka, and then Poland, so I basically create an array with one, two, three, four, five, six objects, so one, two, three, four, five, six objects contained within them. This one is actually similar to the array that we created at the beginning of the tutorial up here the only difference here is that the same way that we created the uh, array has this one has no uh, objects contained within them this one seems to have this one has multiple objects uh, within them so if you print this array for example um so like in here we haven't print any of these arrays actually i should have done earlier so if you want to print an array we basically we call in an array by just like we are calling an uh you know uh, a variable so just like we did up here with the com processors if i type my array four and if i clear the screen down here on the terminal with the cls command and if i just run these two lines of code what that's going to do it's going to print Japan, Canada, France, Italy, Sri Lanka, Poland. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six objects and all six objects gonna get printed from this array. This is a useful uh, notation uh, that a lot of uh, scripters uh, use because this type of creating an array uh, can also make it easier for us to read, like human readable. For example, we can do something like this so if i press enter notice uh, that when i first uh, hit the enter at the very beginning of this uh, you know bunch of uh, objects in here uh, it's uh, indented right here because it is a common notation that we use in scripting and we are using the uh, the visual studio code which we set up at our very first tutorial if you haven't watched that you can go back to my youtube channel and go ahead and watch how we set up our powershell scripting environment when you press enter here because visual studio code knows that i'm using powershell it automatically indented all of these items you just have to make sure that the last bracket is right here and the reason why we sometimes write or a lot of uh, scripters write this way because if you were to review your code or if you were to review somebody else's code it is much easier to read it it is make it easier for humans to read it 
In fact, on Visual Studio Code, when you create arrays with multiple objects this way, on the left hand side, you will see the tiny arrow showing up right here. I don't know if you can see it on the screen clearly. So if, you, if I take my mouse cursor and goes onto the sidebar right here, right next to the you know line numbers, I see this arrow. So if you have a whole bunch of arrays created like this, you can collapse them. So just like, like that. So if you don't want to take up a lot of space on your screen, you can create an array instead of creating on a one line like this, which is harder to read, you can create an array with multiple uh, objects like this. And then on the side of your Visual Studio code and many uh, scripting environments, you can actually collapse those arrays. So it is make it easier for you to work with. And that's why a lot of people use uh, this type of way uh, writing a script. So if you are new to PowerShell again, this is a good way of uh, you know, making sure you keep your code clean and easy to read. And this has no impact on how PowerShell interprets the code, whether the arrays is written this way, or if the arrays is written uh, the previous way, uh, which is like a one line like this, it doesn't really matter to the PowerShell. And also the spaces I put right, right here, like if I put it like this, or if I put it like that, it doesn't really matter to PowerShell. So if you are new to scripting or coding, the PowerShell doesn't care. PowerShell gonna read this and this as exactly the same way when you're running the code. So it doesn't really matter how you do it, but we often time, especially if you are reviewing code or you are using a textbook to study your PowerShell, you will come across arrays that are created specifically in this notation. And again, I just want to highlight, especially those who are new to coding and scripting uh, with PowerShell, which is this series is targeting right now. The target audience is you. Uh, you know, you might come across arrays like this, and this is a very common type. And you can see, uh, you know, it is just for us, for humans, for easy to read that. And again, uh, if you're not sure, you just create an array because you are new around here, you can type, do the get type command. And if you just run uh, this part of the code, notice it returns uh, as a uh, array right here. I'm going to clear the screen again. So it's just CLS. Now each entry in the array is usually called an element, but you may also heard me say, keep saying an object. So these are either element or you can call it element or object. I heard a lot of scripters and, uh, you know, uh, coders and programmers use those sometimes interchangeably. Honestly, they are not the same. Object is different from an element. I haven't gone into detail on how objects work. However, even Microsoft, uh, documentation on PowerShell, sometimes call this thing as an object, sometimes call this, these items as an element. That can be very confusing to someone who is new to learning uh, scripting in PowerShell. So typically we call these things elements again, but Microsoft sometimes also interchange them. I don't know who wrote the documentation. Uh, so. Uh, you may hear me and or other people on YouTube and everywhere calling uh, items contained within uh, a array, either objects or elements. For example, Japan could be an object, Japan could be an element, for example, you know, it could be interchangeable. Just keep that in mind, back of your mind when you are uh, reading through textbooks and materials because there's a little bit of confusion how the Microsoft actually, the people who wrote the my, Windows PowerShell, Microsoft PowerShell 7 uh, documentation have, you know, done it. So keep that in mind. Uh, so that's something I should, uh, you know, mention here. Now, uh, each array um, contains entries, right? And each entry in here, whether it's called an object or an element, uh, has an index position. Indexing in an array starts from zero. For example, 
like many other programming languages, the very first position in this array, for example, up here, this position is zero. It's not one, it's zero. So it's zero, one, two. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five. There are six objects in here, but it start with position number zero, go all the way to five. So one, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So the position number one is not 10 here. Position number one is actually 15. In this array that written in a, a different way on your screen, because it can be collapsed and it's in this order. Position zero, it contain Japan. Position one is not Japan, position one is Canada. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So why this is important is that this become an important part when you want to access elements or specific element contained within the array. So let's say I want to access the element uh, Canada. In order to access that, how we do it is you going to type your array name, for example, dollar sign my array four, which is this array that up here. And let's say I want to access Canada, which is in position number one. So it's not position number two because it start with zero here. So position zero here and the position one here. So to access that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a square bracket and one. So if I put my array four square bracket one, that should return Canada. So let's see if this actually works. So if I run that part of the code, there you go. It returned Canada right here because I'm asking, I'm accessing this specific object or element uh, within that array. Now you can also actually count from backward in an array. For example, if I want to access, let's say Poland, now the position here start with negative one. Remember when you are counting from forward, it start the position number zero. So you can't start counting positions from the backward on your arrays from zero. Otherwise it's going to be a conflict, right? So because zero, one, two, you can start zero from this end. Because of that, you're going to start with negative one here. So in that situation, if I count from backward, which can be very useful in certain scripting and uh, situations, if I want Canada printed again, I'm gonna count negative one, two, three, four, five. So it's, that's going to be uh, a, you know, if I want to count, print that, that will be negative five. So now if I print this, this part right here, it should print Canada, Canada, because this is also printing Canada right here, because that, uh, I'm gonna clear the screen again, CLS. So let's print this again, easy for you guys to see. So in this array, this part is accessing this element, starting out from the front, so zero, one, that will return Canada. This part is accessing same element, but counting from backward, negative one, two, three, four, five. Another way I can prove this, uh, the, this uh, accessing elements from forward and backward is that, let's say I want to access the uh, very uh, first element, that would be zero. And if I want to access the very last element, that would be negative one, because you're counting from uh, the negative side. So if I uh, print this now, it should uh, uh, return, oh, uh, I put an extra bracket right here. So let's clear the screen. So if I run this part, and you can see it returned Japan, which is the element uh, position number zero, or object position number zero, and it returned Poland uh, as the position negative one. So the negative one position is in uh, has Poland uh, contained within it, and uh, zero contain Japan. So that is a very important concept when you are trying to access a specific element contained within your array. You count forward starting from zero, you count backward starting from negative one, and you can use either method to access the items contains within an object. So I'm gonna clear the screen again here on the terminal. 
and the next thing uh, I'm going to show you uh, is on the same um, array I want to know what's the length of it let's say I have added or removed uh, object or elements into that array and I now I'm confused and I want to know how many uh, you know um, elements contains within them you can do that uh, by putting dot length and that will return how many items contains within this array so it's that so basically I'm accessing I'm checking the array number four so that name is my array four so I'm putting dollar my array four dot length and it will return six it has one two three four five six you can also use another one called count uh, that will also return the same one see it, it returned the same is six so this is the one that we ran with uh, the length and this is the one we ran with the count so the length uh, my array four dot length returns six and also my array four dot count also returns six so uh, you can use either one on arrays and it will just work fine and I will explain how you can add or remove elements from an array that is already being created so this is one of the uh, you know useful uh, uh, you know things that we can use the count and length when you start adding and removing items uh, using those commands so let's check if our array can be modified using a built-in uh, commandlets or commands that we have in powershell 7 so we have this array called my array 4 and I want to change this okay so I can add or remove elements from here I also have an empty array way up here called uh, my array get type and we have an array up here with uh, some uh, you know um, elements contained within say, saying um, my array 2 so let's use these things to sh uh, show you, uh, you know, how we can either add or delete items uh, from uh, these arrays. So let's pick our empty array. Um, so let's go my array. If I want to add something to this array that is currently empty, because if I print this part, it's going to be empty. All I need to do is simply put an uh, equal sign here and call in the same array so I'm gonna show my oh sorry uh, it's gonna be dollar sign <coughs> my array and plus and then I can add something in here for example James if I run this code along with this part of the code uh, sorry uh, let's, uh, it's gonna be my array too if I want to add to that one uh, yeah if I want to add to this one yeah it's gonna be my array too and it's just simply going to you know add modify this part and it's going to add the james to this uh, item and the same way if i want to modify an empty array i can call it uh, for example i can delete this part uh, saying just my array that is an empty array right now and this will result in adding that element in there so if I want to add the number, for example, I can just put my, you know, 125 and that 125 will be get added to my array right here. So let's actually add something. So let's pick on this one, uh, my array four, because that's right up here. So let's add something. So I call my array four equal my array. Oh, uh, so dollar sign my array four and I want to add uh, the item uh, called uh, let's say uh, uh, India for example and that should actually return uh, with India added onto it uh, let me see if it actually worked because this might have changed by Microsoft. Uh, let's see, my array 4. Let's print the my array 4.
there you go the my array for uh, now modified with the india added at the very end so now in japan canada france italy sri lanka poland and india all of them are in this array list and we know that because we also printed uh, you know that information uh, you know just below it what happened in here is basically powershell went ahead and destroy my entire array and then go back and add india and all the elements previously contained and recreated the array number four with the india contained within it remember this is one of the things that microsoft powershell does in the background it is a little bit of resource consuming but that's how arrays are rebuilt and elements are added to arrays uh, i'm going to clear the screen here and another way you can actually write this same command is instead of typing my array for equal my array for plus India or whatever the objects or element that you want to add, you can also do something uh, different by instead of doing that way, because this so those of you who have learned uh, command line probably know what I'm about to talk about. Instead of doing that, you can just simply type also my array for, and you can put plus equal because that basically saying my array four equal my array four plus that's what the plus equal sign does and you can then enter uh, another country or whatever you want to add uh, right here so for example if i add usa this will also uh, result in adding uh, you know uh, the my array four so like for example uh, usa to the my array four so another element or object to my array four so there's two ways of doing it so if i run this that added uh, you know the uh, usa to that you know that array you can see it down here so you you have the ability to keep adding items in here or if i put india for example and if i type there and that add japan canada france italy Sri Lanka, Poland, India. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can actually use either this part like this way to add an element or you can put equal and then you can retype that my uh, array again here, my array four and then put plus and then type India and that will also result in creating an array with the India contained within them. So I'm going to put uh, CLS or clear. And I told you that in the background, uh, this is basically destroying the array and recreating it. And uh, how do you I know that? If I put dot um, is fixed size, which is remember a similar uh, same thing that we did in our previous tutorials. And if I run this part of the commandlet, this uh, the, these uh, lines. It should return uh, uh, as a, a fixed size. Uh, so let me see. Uh, let's run this part maybe. Okay. Why doesn't it return that? So it should return as uh, true. So let's run that part. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, let's get rid of that. So I'm going to comment this part out and I'm just going to run only this part and run there you go so it returned uh, saying that yeah this array is a fixed array right here it says two so that basically means is every single time you run a command or a script uh, with uh, adding elements to your array every single time you add an element to an array it's, it's destroying that original array and adding that and a new ele element into it so example when i put, put the india in here that that fixed array now for get destroyed and recreated with the india attached to at the end of it in fact you can actually see the india disappear from the list here uh, because it is not uh, in the original array it got destroyed and got recreated when the script start running so in powershell it start at the very beginning 
and he start running all the items, all the scripts uh, from the top down. And if it gets to this point, it, it has created this array. And if he sees this part where I am adding India, it's going to add India. In fact, uh, you know that's not exactly going to happen at this point. Uh, if I, you know, if I were to run this uh, the, the, the script, however. It, at this point, it is going to destroy this originally created array and it's going to recreate it with all these items already there plus India. In fact, I can prove this in another way. Uh, so imagine I run, so I'm, I'm just going to show you that I, I'm going to run this part first. I'm going to show you something, re, uh, you know, to prove my point. If I just run this part of my code, you can see that Basically, in here it ran and it has Japan blah 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 blah, and then it it should add India up here, right? But at the very beginning, when you start printing out right here, it doesn't actually contain India. It has Japan, Canada, France, Italy, Sri Lanka, and Poland. It doesn't have India. So what happened to India? because India actually was added after this was created and then it got reprinted. So if I print this thing again, oh, sorry, uh, I will put it like that. So if I print this uh, thing again, it'll still come back saying, hey, you know, <laughs> India is added now on the uh, array four, but you know, that, 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 but you know, that's how, you know, it, it knows because it's gonna recreate that thing. If I actually remove it, you know, uh, the, uh, you know that that's what that's how it's going to do it, right? Uh, so, like, if I put plus equal, uh, that this, like, if I put like, you know, sorry, it should be plus and equal. Oops, sorry. Yeah, plus and equal. Now, if I run command right now, right here, and if I run that part of the piece of command, now the India is there. So, why is that? The reason for that is. If I just simply add plus, I should have mentioned that earlier. I'm just simply adding India here and destroying this array and creating a brand new array with just India in it. But if I put plus equal in here, what that will result in is basically, it will gonna add India on top of what we have here. So keep that in mind. Uh, so for example, if I run this again, it's going to create double India. It's going to have two Indias, for example. So let's, uh, but if I do just without uh, this plus equal, it's just going to um, add India in here. If I put just, uh, you know, if I just add like this, uh, so I'm going to repeat that. I know this is going to be a little bit confusing for you guys. So if I put like um, dollar sign, uh, my array four plus what this is going to do it's going to destroy this my array it's going to completely going to get rid of this my array and just going to add india that my array now only going to have india nothing else except just india if i run this code so i'm going to clear this so this will result in just india for example right now the my array four uh, should um uh, sorry, uh, sorry. In this way, uh, yeah, it could, uh, you know, potentially that the create that just India. So keep that in mind. That's something you know that. But you know, if if you if you you know if you are running this code from top to bottom, it can you know it destroy and add India into the list. So either command would should work, uh, you know. But you know, either way, this is this is how you know, uh, the array list can be added or removed from your uh, PowerShell. But again, remember that when you use the dot uh, is uh, fixed size, it basically is saying, yeah, that's, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna comment this thing out, uh, oops. Uh, so I'm gonna say, yeah, uh, I wanna know if this is fixed size and it's gonna say, yeah, it's true. It is fixed size because uh, the PowerShell is basically destroying the command and re-adding it. So uh, if you want to remove an element now, uh, so you added, uh, you know, a whole bunch of items. 
and uh, you want to uh, remove an element uh, you can do that like for example let's say I want to remove uh, right here uh, so I'm gonna come in this part out because I don't want to print bunch of stuff in here uh, so let's say I want to remove um, so I'm gonna get rid of this too I don't need that I'm going to use uh, this and I want to remove um, the item called uh, Manuja, right? Or let's say Sanuja. I want to remove item Sanuja. It doesn't really matter. I want to remove an item from here. So how can you do that? So I'm going to clear this screen on the uh, bottom. To remove an item, let's say I want to remove uh, Sanuja. So I'm going to put array number two. Uh, I'm going to put equal. And I'm going to say my so sorry dollar sign my array so that's my array 2 and I'm gonna put a space and I can't just go like negative and start typing Sanuja if I move away my cursor you'll notice that it just have a negative sign here you can do that because this is like a switch this is called a switch in PowerShell look there is a list that shows up because there are a bunch of switches and things that you can do here so in PowerShell, if you want to remove an item, you can put you have to put any any mean not equal to like it's it's, it's basically saying remove an item from Sanu uh, in from this list uh, we created up here. So if I run this right now, so I'm gonna go in here. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of anything that's uh, printing stuff to my uh, screen, uh, but I'm gonna leave all the commands that I have typed so you can see them from beginning to the end. Now, if I run the whole thing here, uh, the only thing that it's going to print uh, right now is this part. Uh, so let's run it mm, like that, and it returns uh, with Manuja and Net IT Geeks because it removed Sanuja contained within there. So now this new array doesn't have Sanuja in here. So the script started at the top and it started running 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 and it's created this array this created this array these old arrays and then suddenly it sees this part and it says hey remove sanuja so it's get rid of sanuja in fact uh, another way i can show you is that if i run uh, up here uh, dollar sign so uh, let's go my array two dot uh, length so it's counting length here and this is after removal so this is so this is basically uh, printing before the removal uh, I'm gonna collapse this one so it's easy for you to see so array 4 is collapsed right now so if there all the elements are there I'm just collapsing it so when it start running it's go through and it's in here it's gonna print the length of this my array 2 and it's gonna remove an element and then it's gonna print uh, my array two here and also the length down here. So, so that way you will get an idea. So the length also has changed. Uh, so uh, also if you wanna comment your uh, script in PowerShell is basically you can put, put a hashtag or hash symbol. And this is, you know, uh, length. You can type, you know, L-E-N-G the, of the array and two. Uh, uh, at uh, start and then in here uh, I can say it uh, you know uh, length of the array 2 after removal and then if I th these comments get ignored when the PowerShell is running so this is how you comment in PowerShell uh, if I run this command right now, so if I clear this uh, screen again, CLS and type the whole thing, uh, run the whole thing. Oh, uh, what happened here? Oh, uh, CLS, run the whole thing. There you go. Make sure you, when you are using Visual Studio Code, you press this thing to run the entire code. This thing only run the code where your cursor is or where what you have highlighted. So make sure you run that. And when you run the entire code from top to bottom by pressing this, at the very beginning when it ran, when it starts from the top and it goes through one at a time, code, 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 and whoops, it's created the array two, but it has now ele three elements. And then it goes down the thing and it removes an element and then suddenly there's only two elements. Because I remove an element right here. So that's how you can remove an element. 
again when you remove an element it does the same thing in the background as adding an element uh, to a powershell array it completely destroyed it and create a brand new array i'm going to clear the screen here uh, because i'm going to cover our next part we will move on to something related to arrays but operate slightly differently called the array list. Remember I keep mentioning the array is a fixed size data structure thus the arrays always need to uh, mention the size of the elements and when you add or remove it get destroyed and recreated in the background. On the other hand array list is not a fixed structure at all. It's not a fixed data structure. Compared to arrays, array lists are not fixed data structures. Thus, there is no need to mention the size of the array list, especially when creating with objects. And the nice thing about this is it is a lower hit to your memory usage and low, it is a better option compared to arrays. In fact, if I want to create an array, I always go with the array list over arrays because in my script, the array list are more efficient than arrays when you when I'm keep adding and removing uh, elements or objects into it. In array list, we oftentimes use the term objects as opposed to elements, whatever the items contains within them for sure this time. Uh, you know, most Microsoft documentation will refer array list items as uh, basically uh, objects. I'm also going to clear the screen uh, up here. Uh, so I'm going to save this file actually. So in case we need it uh, later uh, and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to say array list, uh, let's say dash two. So there's a brand new file and I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to save it. So it's easy for us to see. I'm, I just you know, realized that would be much clear, you know, start with a clean uh, slate, right? To talk about array list. First thing we want to know is how we can create an array list. To create an array list, you start with the dollar sign, just like a variable. And we basically going to create a name that we will be assigned to the one that we are creating. So we will, I'm going to call it array uh, list zero. And I'm going to put enter, which is our operator. And next I'm going to do a new dash object space. And we will put a switch called type. So I'm going to put type space system dot collections dot array list so to create an array you give it a name starting with a dollar sign so i call it uh, array list zero and then we're going to use new object commandlet with the switch uh, uh, type system dot collections dot array list so these are built-in items within your Windows PowerShell 7. And how do we know we just created an array list here? Because you recall that if I go uh, sign $array uh, list 0 and put dot and then say get type, the same one that we used before uh, in our uh, arrays, to check whether it is an array and if I run this code which are these two parts of the code it should return the object as an array list right here it shows the name as uh, an array list it is a system object just like before but the type right now is an array list so this is basically creating an array list by using a already built in uh, options contained within your PowerShell 7, which is called the system.collection.arraylist. When you are starting out in PowerShell, you should, you know, stick to creating array lists using the method that I'm showing right up here. 
because this is the recommended method of creating an array list. However, if you are reviewing other people's scripts while you are learning, uh, especially when you have a textbook with different way of creating array list, you may come across another method of creating an array list that would be, uh, so if I'm gonna leave a space here so it's easy for you to follow, would be by doing, uh, let's say, array uh, list one. I'm gonna call this equal, and I'm gonna put a bracket system dot collections dot uh, array list. And then in here, what we need to do is to go outside of this item and go at symbol, and you need to uh, open and close it. So both of these things will be returning an array list. Both methods are valid and I can actually prove this. Uh, if I type here uh, array list one, oops, sorry. Let's go array list one dot get type. So, and if I pr uh, clear the screen here, CLS clear. And if I run, oh, I run the whole kind of thing actually. If I run the whole thing, um, it shows that, hey, both of them are array list. This is an array list, this is an array list. So this is this part is an array list, this part is an array list. So these are both valid array list creation methods, but what we recommend is using this method over this method. We don't uh, usually use this method anymore, but it used to be still a function that earlier, they started at the very beginning of PowerShell, but the modern type, the modern way of doing it especially when you are still starting out, I would recommend going with this method as shown at the top. Again, both are valid, but this method is more efficient in terms of using memory when running the script. Therefore, instead of using this method, use the one shown above. Both are valid method. I'm gonna leave this second method here as well, but I'm gonna comment them out uh, so that you know, you know that I am recommending the one that we are creating uh, the method up here. Now, next thing we need to learn is how can we add to an array list that we have created already, right? So you can create an array a list. So I created the array list zero up here, for example, and now I want to add uh, something to this array list. You can do that uh, by simply calling in that array list and adding an item uh, to it. So once that array list has been established, so we have established an array list called array list zero up here, and I'm gonna call in that array list and I can start adding item to it. To do that, I'm gonna start with the dollar sign and I'm gonna start array list zero because that's where I want to add it. And I'm gonna put dot add and then I'm gonna open a bracket and close a bracket and I'm gonna add bread. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna run through this code. Uh, I'm gonna uh, delete this get type right here. It's gonna run through this code. Uh, remember these are comments. Um, uh, I'm just gonna put it, this is one of the recommended, uh, not, not so recommended method. And then it's gonna create this array list up here and it's gonna add bread to this array list. And the, you know, if you wanna add multiple items, for example, if you wanna add uh, another item right after it, you can actually add it, uh, you know, um, the next item right after this as well. And I will also show you something uh, that, you know, uh, that when you run this code, it will print the uh, whatever contained within that array list as well. So for example, if I clear this screen and if I run the whole code, it's going to add uh, the, you know, this item uh, into uh, that array list uh, zero that we have created up here. And then if we, uh, let me see if I run it again. Yeah, I think it does. Uh, yeah, it does add uh, to, let me see what array list. Yeah, that should be good. And if I print uh, this item, so let's say if I print this array list zero, oops, sorry, like that. If I run the whole code, it should print bread, all right? Um, 
I, I forgot, I uh, noticed that it's printing something called zero up here. Uh, so now, you know, that something happened uh, when you run uh, this type of code, it's gonna print that item right there. Um, you can actually <clears throat> prevent that from happening if you want to. If you add uh, in here void, and if I clear the screen on the terminal, and if I run the whole comma, uh, uh, whole script right here, uh, that zero is no longer printing. So if you don't want to print, so this is one of the quirky things about uh, PowerShell. If you run uh, an array list, and if you add an item, it's gonna print the item's position. So the reason why, if I, if I remove the void here, if I clear, and if I run this, what that's going to do is it's going to print the position in which this bread uh, element or object is added. So if I run here, hey, it's saying I added the bread and it is on position number zero. I can add another one, for example. So if I type array uh, list uh, zero dot add, and now instead of bread, I'm going to add, let's say eggs or milk or something like that. Let's call it milk. And now if I print this uh, uh, item, uh, the whole code, it's gonna create that array list up here and it's gonna add these two part. So I'm gonna run the whole thing. There you go. Position zero is bread, position two is, uh, sorry, position zero is bread, position one is milk, even though there's two objects in here. So if you don't want this position to get printed, what you can do is uh, to add a void in here. So if I put void, uh, and then if I put void down here, And if I print this part, now the whole code, you will notice it just print bread and milk. So by adding void at the very front of the, uh, the uh, addition code, you can avoid printing the position in which uh, these things are being uh, added. Uh, I'm gonna actually uh, delete this part because it might confuse some people who are joining in in the middle of the video. Uh, it's just a recommended another method, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. Uh, so, having said that, you can also add multiple items to the array list at the same time. Uh, if you want to add that uh, multiple items, uh, for example, uh, we can go uh, uh, by, to add that, you can go like a dollar sign and again, I'm gonna do uh, array list zero, and I'm gonna go dot. And now, uh, to add and arrange, uh, you know, uh, multiple items uh, to this uh, array list, we can add using a special, uh, I, uh, you know, a special command or um, you know the string uh, which is add range, uh, which which is it's actually a special function. It's a function. So you're gonna put array list dot, and I'm gonna use the function called add range function. And now uh, we can put at symbol next and we're gonna open and close the parentheses here and we can add, for example, let's say apple. And I want to add a candy. And then I'm going to add mouse. I don't know why, it just, I, that's the first thing I can think of. And I'm gonna add beef. And we need to close the parentheses here because this parentheses represent the one you know at the very front and this parentheses representing the center. And now what happened is you are adding multiple items, not just bread and milk in one go. So if I run this code right now, what that's gonna result in is gonna, it added bread and milk on these two. And then it start adding the apple, the candy, the mouse and beef. Notice when they, it is adding multiple items, you don't need to add the void, void uh, at the front in order for it to stop from printing the position. So if I clear the screen here, if I don't have void here, for example, I just will get rid of one of the voids here. And if I run this script right now, it's gonna print the position of milk, which added because it doesn't have the void here. But when you are adding multiple items, you don't need this void at the front in order to stop it from printing the position uh, on your screen. So keep that in mind uh, because that uh, is a useful thing. Uh, you can add multiple items and you don't even need to use the void because it knows uh, not to print it uh, by built-in functions. So there you go, it added bread, milk, apple, candy, mouse in that order to this array list. 
and without actually destroying the array list. That's another thing. Unlike an array, it doesn't destroy, it just keep appending to the end of it. Now, having said that, now this all of these things, items have, uh, you know, uh, items uh, contained within them. You can also remove an item from here. So after adding all of these things, if you want to remove, let's say, mouse, at this point, it's already created uh, this array list with the mouse on it. You can do that. So let's print array list twice. So I'm going to print it here. And this is going to be printing before removing. Printing before removing mouse. Oh, before, before removing mouse. And this is printing after removing mouse. Uh, I'll just type after remove mouse. Um, what you can do is you can call in the array list again. So this is the array list zero. And to remove, I'm going to use a, another function called remove function. And I'm going to remove mouse. M O U S C. Did I spell that right? Yeah, that's right. M O U S C mouse. So it's going to go through and it's going to print right here uh, whatever the list it will contain mouse right here and then we're going to remove the mouse and we're going to print the list again so to remove an item what i want to show you here uh, from an array list is basically crawling the array so dollar sign array name dot remove function and within that remove function you can remove that object so i'm going to clear this terminal here and i'm going to run the whole code again at very beginning, it printed, uh, you know, uh, the entire list. So it can start from bread and went all the way to mouse right here. And uh, also beef, sorry, all the way to mouse and beef. And then the next time when it, the code got printed right here, it start with, uh, uh, you know, uh, bread, just like before. But now the mouse is missing. Bread, milk, apple, candy, beef. That's all, uh, you know, it's remaining. So that uh, this is uh, this is one way that, you know, you, you know, the, this is the way that you can actually remove uh, uh, an item. But you can also re add this uh, item by using the add function. So this is a remove function, but you can use the add function. So now the this array does not have the mouse because I can reprint this again. So if I just reprint only just if I just run only this part of the code, uh, you can see that. Uh, so let's see clear. If I just run this part of the code, you can see the mouse is missing now bread, milk, apple, candy, beef. The mouse is gone. Uh, if you want to re add uh, the mouse, you can calling the function again, array is zero. Now to add, we're gonna use the add function. And in here, we can call in uh, whatever we want to add. So uh, let, let's add something else instead of a mouse. So this is candy beef, let's say, uh, uh, I want to add chicken. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm gonna add chicken in here. So now if I run the, uh, you know, the code in here, uh, just uh, the whole, even the whole code, uh, let's do that uh, clear. And I run the whole code. What that's gonna result in is right here. At the very beginning, we have bread, milk, apple, candy, mouse, beef. Then the mouse was removed right here and then the chicken was added right below it. So now we have bread, milk, apple, candy, beef, chicken. So it appended and it added the chicken to the very end of this uh, array list. So the remove function will remove an object or element out of your array list and add function will add to a array list. And keep in mind, when you add an item to an array list is add at the very end right here using this type of method. When you're removing the function, it could be anywhere in here, you can, uh, you know, remove uh, that function. So for example, if I want to uh, remove mouse, I said mouse, if I want candy, candy, I don't, it doesn't matter where the position is. 
Having said that, one of the best features we have in array list is that we do not have in arrays, when you compare the array list to an array, is that you can actually remove a specific element or an object by calling in the actual location or the position of that object or the element. For example, we have apple candy mouse beef and uh, let's say I want to remove mouse but I, I know where the mouse is located in the positions of things but I don't know uh, you know what it's exactly called maybe it's mouse maybe it's mouses or something like that but I know the position so I don't know whether it's mouse or mouses or something like that but I just want to uh, remove a specific element or object from a specific position you can do that uh, so uh, let's see I'm gonna clear this screen here in other words what I want to do is to remove mouse by basically calling in the position of the mouse within my array list instead of actually calling in the object itself to do that we can get rid of the remove uh, item right here the function right here and again we're going to start with the dollar sign and the array list uh, name so this is the array list zero for my and this time after this dot instead of we will do remove uh, the specific item we can go remove at so this function so instead of going remove and then calling in the mouse by typing in like last time like I did like that we're gonna change that to remove at so this is another function and this allow us to remove an element from a specific position within your array list without having to know what that object itself is so for example in this array list at the very beginning we created the array list and we start adding bread milk apple candy mouse beef we add a, one at a time here and we add bunch of here so if we count this array list from position uh, at the very beginning which is position 0 this is position 0 1 2 3 4 so the mouse is sitting at position number 4 and that's what we are trying to remove right so we can call in the position number 4 here and if we print this array list now so simply like reprinting the array list down here what that's going to do at the very beginning you're going to see the mouse here but position 0 1 2 3 4 position 4 will be eliminated or deleted removed from this array list as a result mouse will disappear on the second print so basically one of the key features in array list compared to an array is you can call in a position within that array list to remove the that item so let's run this code uh, before we talk too much so right here so I just ran the code it went through it created this array list up here it added these elements and then suddenly the element number four get eliminated so when it's printed at here it printed bread milk apple candy mouse and beef so that's the first print that's the first print item right here but the next time it start printing it's bread milk apple candy beef it's missing the mouse because we remove mouse by running this specific piece of code right here so that's how you can remove an element or an object from your array list by calling in its function uh, position instead of calling in the actual object itself you can also remove a range of elements if you would like to delete a range of elements from your list. So to do that, uh, what we can do, uh, oh, uh, we'll keep that uh, the same print uh, here. To remove a range of items, let's say I want to remove everything in here starting from milk to candy. So I'm going to remove milk, apple, candy. If you want to do that 
you can do that with another function called remove range and now we can decide what range I want to remove so I'm going to remove from range number one all the way to range number three because I'm going to remove zero and then no we are not going to remove zero we're going to remove one two three we're going to remove these three items so the range that is going to remove will include milk apple and candy so again it's going to run the call from the top and it's going to create the array list here it's going to add bread milk and it start adding apple candy mouse and beef on this line and after that what's going to happen is basically it's going to print the everything in here and then we're going to remove uh, elements milk apple and candy so if i run this code now uh, actually i will clear this uh, terminal first and then if i run this code now what that result in at the very beginning it created the uh, you know array list here i printed bread milk apple candy mouse but then it start printing uh, uh sorry and beef uh, and beef and then it start printing beef and it's missing milk apple and candy because i use the remove range function to remove milk apple and candy so milk apple and candy is gone here now so the original one had all of this so if, if i uh, all of these items but now i have removed a range so that's one of the advantages of using array list it allow us to also uh, uh, use functions like remove at or remove range to remove uh, objects out of that array list now we looked at how we can remove and add elements or object to your array list next thing i'm going to show you is how you can select items out of this so you can use it on your code so I'm going to clear the screen here and I'm also going to uh, remove these items right here these lines and in order for you to get a specific item or call in or access a object or element within an array list you can do the exactly the same thing we did with arrays that's one of the reasons why array list and arrays are related to each other because they are basically the similar items but it behaves slightly differently just like previously we did few minutes ago with array list what you do you start with the um, you know this uh, the array list uh, you know uh, dollar sign uh, i'm just going to get rid of this as well this is just printing the array list you want to print a specific items contained within that array list so we're going to call in the array list one and just like an uh, array uh, you know array we did previously we're going to use a square brackets and i'm going to call in let's say position number zero one two three so i'm going to call in candy so i'm going to call position number three so remember the list always counts from the front starting with zero position zero and go zero one two three and if you want to call in backward it starts with negative one negative two negative three so if i call in this and if i run it it'll print candy right here and because candy is in the center if i put negative three here if i clear the screen it's going to print candy candy twice see it's print candy candy twice so if I want to print apple, for example, I start it again, just like an array, starting from position zero, zero, one, two. Uh, and so I want to print apple, that's position two. But because I want to print something from backward, if counting from backward, negative one, that's the starting position, just like arrays, negative one, two, three, four, that will give you negative uh, four. So negative one, two, three, four, and it's this zero, one, two, both will print apple now. So if I print now, I'll print apple, apple. So just like arrays, array list count start from the zero position first, and it goes on to uh, the next, uh, you know, uh, item uh, right after next. So I'm gonna clear the screen again here. Uh, so that's how you basically access 
uh, objects or elements contained within an array. It's just like an array, you count from the uh, forward, starting from zero position, you count from the backward, starting from a negative one position. Uh, also, I just realized something um, as we discuss here. You know, if I don't have these two lines of uh, code here, uh, you array list, if you're just looking at this array list, the zero portion will be here. But because we're adding, creating an array list right here, array list zero, and then start adding it to that array list like this way, and then keep appending and adding all of this, the portion zero is here, and then counting one, two, three, four. I think you understand that, uh, you know, as I went through the uh, lecture. One last thing, to get the number of elements in an array list, unlike the arrays, we can only use the count function. You can't use the you know the other you know uh, other function that I mentioned before. We can only use uh, you know uh, the dot count, not the dot length method, because array list, unlike arrays, don't actually have um, you know length it actually have a count so if you want to count number of objects in here what you do actually you type in the array list go put dot and type count and if i print that it'll say oh i print twice so that's why so i'm gonna run one more time so right here it'll say it has six items because it's one two three four five six items if i you know if i actually uh, you know comment this part out it'll say it has one, two, three, four items. So if I run it again, see, it shows four items because now the two first two items that we added at the top is not there. It's just this uh, array list. And so therefore it's one, two, three, four items. So is, uh, if you try to use the length, uh, that should give you four, but it's gonna, print bunch of other stuff in here and you know I don't usually use the uh, you know length uh, part I usually uh, use the count uh, because I will show you what I mean by that if I clear if I type print so it go five 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 and then four but it's actually one two three four so instead of length if you want to actually count something I simply use the count function uh, there is a difference between length and count uh, you know, uh, th there's a reason why it is four and the other five other one. I will explain that later sometime, but just keep in mind, uh, you know, the count function is for now, for as a beginner to uh, PowerShell 7, that's the function that you should be using to count number of elements contained within your array list. I recommend that you use array list over arrays due to the versatility and options available within the array list as opposed to arrays. So when you're comparing array list to arrays, array list are much more flexible. And even when I want to create an array, I just simply create an array list every single time I use uh, PowerShell scripting, but both of these uh, can be utilized in your code. Uh, they'll have slightly different functions uh, and options available to you. For today, this is everything and there are few more concepts or operations associated with arrays and array lists that I did not cover in this tutorial in order to keep this video sh as short as possible for those of you who are new to PowerShell. We will cover them as we go through this lecture series and start creating and building much more complex uh, PowerShell scripts. And if you haven't watched my previous tutorials on PowerShells or you would like to learn something different like Active Directory or something else, please go ahead and check out my YouTube channel and there are a ton of information for IT professionals as well as for students. Please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel because everything helps to get the word out that I'm posting these videos. Until next time, thank you so much and have a nice day.